Uh, how to use AI safely and make learning or work easier. They were among key topics discussed at a symposium today. Academics, government agencies and firms gathered to look at ways to ride this technological wave to transform all aspects of human society. And for more, we're joined by Professor Jinhua Zhao. He's a lead principal investigator at Smart M3S, which organizes this event, and he's also a professor at MIT. Uh, thank you for coming in this evening, Professor Zhao. Very nice to be back. Yes. Uh, right. Dawn already outlined the key themes at this symposium. Now, we last spoke to you July last year when M3S was, in fact, launched. That's so in the six months, what if what has changed that you would like to highlight? And uh, I suppose the symposium will be a milestone in terms of the changes that have been made. Very much, yeah. In the past six months, in the global level, AI made significant progress. Yeah, particularly probably uh, ChatGPT from uh, less known to a very popular discussion. The large language model really captured people's imagination, right? In this symposium this afternoon, we actually had four themes, uh, AI's impact on future learning, AI's impact on future work, and also, particularly the one bridge between the digital and the physical, move from the cognitive domain to the physical domain. That's another area we really want to emphasize. Yeah. Mm. So, on that point about sort of integrating or seeing how you can sort of merge the two, how AI can bring those two spheres together, uh, how are we actually using it insofar as physical work or manual labor is concerned? How is AI supporting that? Right. There's a huge potential of that, right? It covers a wide range from like service industry to construction, uh, first system management, airport. I'll give you example. So help to uh, uh, fold your, your laundries, right? In the medical sense, uh, helping the patient with water, right? In the airport, bring the luggages uh, to the different belt. Right? The, Robert has been able to do many things previously in the manufacturer domain. The key difference that AI makes is move into an unstructured environment where things are messy, but AI is able to perceive the environment and try to carry out the duty there. All right. Uh, I didn't hear that so clearly. You said mm. uh, what is different now yeah. is that it's managed to deal with a more messy situation. Exactly. Uh, are there any principles in terms of how you are developing this mm. so that increasingly it can manage all kinds of messiness across different sectors. Yeah, I think that's the key difference, right? In the structured environment, the technology is very mature, right? In the manufacturer's context. Uh, in fact, in Singapore, for every 10,000 workers, we already deploy about 600 uh, robots. Singapore is ranked number two in terms of the robot in, uh, uh, density per, per capita. Right. The number one is the South Korea of this. But now the difference is moving into this unstructured environment. In order for the robot to deal with the messy environment, it needs to build up this common sense reasoning. Right. That's where the AI development is making an important breakthrough in this. Mm. You're using different kinds of technology. You need to scale that technology mm. in order to be effective right. as well. How do you actually go about doing that for, for this you know, to sort of organize this unstructured work, as it were. Right, yeah. So maybe I mentioned there are two important technologies there, right? One is this common sense reasoning, right? Mm -hmm. The second one is actually beyond automation. It's more about intelligent collaboration, right? Because when we see mass environment, the most unpredictable factor is our human beings, right? When a machine interacts with people, the key capacity to develop is for the machine to understand our human's intention. Right. That's the key technology bricks we need to conquer in order for the robot to be, for example, working with you in your household, helping you folding the, uh, the laundry there. Right. You need to interact with you. You need to understand your intention. That's what AI is trying to help. Mm. Okay, we talk about intelligent collaboration, mm. of course, uh, I'm sure this is old news. To you. Constant concerns about will we lose our jobs to robots. Mm. But intelligent cooperation or collaboration, mm. is that something only humans can do and robots cannot ever do? That's a very good question on that. So for a long time, we discussed human or machine. But now I think we really want to answer more interesting question is human and the machine, right? When we bring human and machine together in the team, can they do things that are impossible before? That's what is really drive our excitement on that, much more than how many jobs can be replaced by machine itself. Yes.
it will certainly change the future of work entirely. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uncertainty how, how we evolve on this, right? But here, I think human always will have a role to play, right? Yeah. Uh, give you one uh, data point. Today, 60% of the job today did not exist in the 1950s. So all the new jobs actually, more than 60% uh, of the jobs are created since then, right? So from one side, technology development will remove some jobs, but also because the human machine collaboration will create many, many new jobs that didn't exist before. Professor Chow, thank you very much for coming into the studios and giving us an update uh, on, on these developments. And it's good to see you again as well, Professor uh, Chow, uh, Jinhua Chow there from MIT. My pleasure. Thank you.